So I'm going to show you how to photo bash by using this artwork of mine as an example. So you can see I have lots of photo textures scattered all around and it's way more detailed than what I would have done manually by just, you know, painting it by hand myself. So it's a really neat trick that can save you a lot of time in painting. So let's get started. So uh, if we go back a couple of steps into the painting process. So here, um, you can see it's just like you can see the rectangular image, right? Uh, like the source image, you can see the edge of it. But in the final painting, it doesn't really, you can't really see it that much. So it doesn't really matter. And also, um, the blend mode for this is darker color. So darker color just picks, um, just compares the image. So if the background is say bright and um, this layer is dark, they would choose to show the darker color. That's what it means. So I can get a lot more information about the shadows over here. And I also lowered its opacity. The, so it's not as, um, it's not as prominent but it shows a bit of like that coral texture, which is exactly what I want for this piece. And same thing with this one, darker color as well. Same with this one, this one. So you can see I've changed um, what type of blend mode it is. So this is color because I kind of already like the texture that I have. So it's a bit rocky and kind of subtle, but I wanted more of that like pop of color. That's why I went for this one. And you can see like it's really really vibrant so you can experiment with different blend modes and um honestly each blend mode has its own effect and like properties that you just really need to have a feel for but um the general thing is like there is this darken thing if you want to darken something just pick from this section and there's also lighten and you can just pick from this section and generally, if you just choose between those two sections, you're fine. Now, on to the next step. You can use different filters to apply to your image. So right now, this is actually the kind of like really rough uh, photo bash. So this is coming from like two images. So this is the first image and this is the second one. And I've just kind of mixed those two and get this image. Then, um, I already know that for the style that I'm going for, this has way too many detail to get started painting over. So I've just applied a filter over it, like you can see over here. So this is another, um, example of what filter you can use. I think this is a cutout filter, which didn't really work, but if it works for your style, then that's great. But I opted for this one, which I think is um, smooth. So you can go over here, go over here to the filter section and start Jimmy QT. So this is like the filter section of uh, Krita. And you can use smooth. Let's search smooth. Then um, you can choose like any of these. The these are like slightly bit different from each other, but I am more looking for smooth bilateral. And you can change, say, the spatial variance. Uh, this, like, changing these values will make it so that um, it, it gets to show what details you want to keep and what details you you don't want to keep. So you can now see that um, it's like flattening the colors. So this isn't necessarily what I want, but just to show you the effect, that's it. This is what it looks like. So from here, this is definitely like. A way better starting point for your painting so you can just you know paint over this with a better like color that you would like and paint the leaves yourself design the shapes yourself as the artist and yeah so this is like really really useful for um, these types of works where um, you would need a lot of detail and planning but um, manually painting everything would just take way too long so opting for a photograph and adding a filter over it, then painting over the filtered photograph is gonna basically like supercharge your progress in uh, into your painting, especially when you're dealing with deadlines. So uh, on to the next step. 
This one is more applicable to architectural elements. So in Krita, you have lots of um, transform tools at your disposal. Transform options. And as an example, say we take like uh, like this type of grunge thing. Then um, if you go to free transform, then either click on one of these in the tool options, or you can just right click and select what type of transform you would like to do. Um, I would either go for uh, mesh, which does this thing, which is really, really useful, but um, not applicable to most things. But yeah, you can definitely have this um, really nice effect to it when you just want um, something to be in perspective and like align to it. And the other one, of course, is the perspective one. This is just the corners and you can align it um, to the perspective that you want using uh, by just manually manipulating the corners. Then, uh, as we discussed previously, you can use different um, layer modes or blending modes. Say, I want this to be a multiply, then over the opacity, maybe something like this. And now it has this like kind of weathering effect on this particular area, and I can move on to other areas that I want to weather. What if this wasn't like an organic thing and more like, I don't know, maybe something like a brick or um, a new window or something that really needs to align well to the image. So for this type of uh, texture, you would need to align um, very well to the perspective. And uh, what if we wanted to have this kind of change after we do the um, transforming? Well, we can do that by adding a transform mask over here. So just click this drop down button and look for the transform mask. And now you can do the transform over here on this mask, not the layer itself. So you can do this and I'm going to select perspective and line it up. So now you can see it's lining up fairly well to our render or like our painting. And let me just change the blend mode for that so you can see much clearly. So yeah. Something like that. Of course, like the brick texture that I've made is way too big. But yeah, I can also change that by going over here again, transforming it. So you can see I've uh, I've actually uh, went to the paint layer, to the actual paint layer to change the blend mode. And I went back to transform mask and I was given the same option. Like it saved my setting for transforming this. That's why it's really, really useful for like keeping your... Um, paintings non-destructive and you can change anything that you want later on so yeah now it's like lining up a bit better so you can see like there is there's this brick and you can do this for windows for ornaments and whatnot so this is really really useful and you can just turn it on and off say i want for example a brick i want this to be a window something like this not not to scale, of course, but just to give you an idea, let's turn everything back on again. Turn this on, and you can see it's lining up to the perspective. Now I just change the perspective so that um, it's to scale, and you can see that it's lining up to the existing windows that we have, which is great. So now, now that you have this, you can just um, apply the the layer, then paint over it, paint over it. So you can like add more depth to it. Maybe add a thicker shadow for this because this is going to show some depth to your painting. Add highlight for here. So the, the possibilities are endless for um, this transform mask, which is really, really cool. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you learned a lot about how to photo bash in Krita. Photo bashing Krita is it's not discussed enough, I think, but it's really, really powerful and kind of exceeds um, Photoshop's capabilities at some times as well. So yeah, uh, hope you have a good day and thanks for watching.